All right, guys. Uh, Ham Solo here, K0FIR. So this is a just a very short video of me doing some uh, GMRS work. So uh, I have uh, joined the local uh, county CERT team, Community Emergency Response Team, and within a month I made the communications officer and so we're just starting to try to get this team off the ground in Colorado and uh, they handed me some equipment to kind of see is this what we needed to do for our communications and uh, most of it's all just GMRS stuff and so they have some uh, bow fangs here uh, UV 5Rs I know that they're not technically GMRS radios, uh, but they're able to uh, transmit in those frequencies, and that's what they purchased. And so they have some uh, knockoff Nagoya 771 antennas on them, and I've got one sitting out here on a, on a vehicle uh, that I'm using just to uh, for testing purposes. Uh, mainly their system consists of, uh, you know, a couple of these uh, stray antennas, uh, that I have sitting inside the uh, the garage I'm working on. Uh, got the line running over here into <clears throat> basically a duplexer. Uh, and then you have a duplex Surecom controller there in the background. And uh, I've got my input radio, my output radio for this duplexer. You can see my uh, dummy load sitting there on the side. I was using it when I was doing the testing. And I think if I go back one picture, you can also see... Uh, this is my uh, uh, actual SWR meter there with the blue uh, ground plane plate on it. And so I was kind of running back and forth, uh, you know, going, trying to get the duplexer stuff to work on the on the radios, getting rid of all their little junk wire connections that they had put on there. Had to use several different adapters to make the whole thing work, so they didn't have those. Those came out of my, uh, my cache. Uh, they did have this brand new, it's about a eight, maybe six foot antenna. And uh, I just have it set up in the, in the side of the tree, running a wire down uh, to where they had a uh, amplifier. And so that's actually another bow fang sitting right here. And it's running into this, what's rated as a 25 watt uh, to maybe 30 watt amplifier. And, you know, got running with the old 12 amp hour LiPo battery that they had, uh, controller for the solar panel. And I was, I had all three things tied together. So I had this system with the, uh, the solar panel, the battery, the controller into the bow thing with the amp attached to it that was running to the antenna in the tree. And then I had this bow thing on the same channels with this system going with the uh, radios into the duplexer. And I got uh, everything to work and and uh, was able to broadcast using uh, separate independent radios. But of all the radios they have, uh, they don't have any UV5R chargers for some reason. And so the only ones that are running that have uh, power chargers are going to be whatever these numbered bow fangs. I think they were X3s. I think that's the number on them. That's these right here. And uh, they had two chargers that I had those sitting in when I was doing the duplexer. And there's one more charger, but it doesn't work. It doesn't come on. And then they have two UV5Rs. One's completely dead. And the other one is this green one. And, uh, you know, it's only got half battery life now. So I don't know what they were doing to charge those, if they were charging them or not. Um, nothing's really running right now for that CERT team. And so I think the, the idea would be once we get approved by FEMA and, uh, you know, we're sponsored by the uh, the sheriff's office and the Office of Emergency Management there in that county, we'll get them to supply us with 800 megahertz radios and our own talk group frequencies and simplex, and we won't even use any of this GMRS stuff. So... Uh, you know, how long they might have had these radios, I'm not sure, but uh, this system isn't really tenable. Uh, how they wanted me to try to 
to use it or work on it or, or, or look at it for him to see if it was feasible. But I don't think it's going to be feasible when we do uh, wildfires or, or uh, you know, helping out with shelters or something like that. Uh, you know, to set this thing up and have it portable doesn't seem like it's going to work that well. And so, I don't know, might be more to follow with that. Uh, I am going to attach to the end of this uh, a radio that I purchased for GMRS after... Uh, you know, I was told I might be the communications officer. So I went and, and applied and got my GMRS license and, uh, you know, uh, purchased my own radio. And so, uh, it's a pretty nice, uh, radio. I got it from better safe radios and, uh, the, the owner was incredibly helpful with, uh, getting me started and, and, and uh, I got some discount coupon codes from him uh, that I will put down at the bottom of this video. But I will attach the the what was the unboxing video to the end of this little spiel here. So appreciate you watching. Uh, stay tuned. Thanks. Okay, well, apparently uh, none of that just recorded. So uh, this is was an unboxing video of the uh, the Oshang. Uh, the new GMRS KGUV9G uh, Pro, and uh, it is a GMRS radio, and it has uh, something in the neighborhood of 800 and something memory channels, uh, pre-programmed for uh, some of the prepper things, a lot of state government agencies, what they call SHTF uh, in the prepper world, and so. Uh, let me show you what was in the box uh, because now it's all out on the table. So there's a uh, regular charger, four uh, connector points. Uh, you have a uh, dual light system charge in full, red and green with its cable. Wrist strap. The regular antenna that comes with it. And this is a GMRS antenna from Oshang and receive of all those other uh, pre-programmed VHF, UHF bands. All receive, you can't broadcast on them. Uh, there is the belt clip, and that goes directly on the battery. There's been several videos about people stripping the battery or, or uh, actually shearing the heads off the screws and uh, how they think that there needs to be washers or something in between. And uh, the... Uh, business that sells the radio better safe radios uh he the owner responded and said that uh they're cross-threading they're cross-threading the the screws uh that they need to be a little bit more uh, uh tedious and how they're screwing it down they can't do it at an angle and uh that uh you know thread it in and if you feel a little bit of resistance back it off and re-thread it in and uh, as you go back and forth and work the screw into a, a new radio um, uh, battery, then it would uh, seat properly instead of them shearing off the, the screws in there because they're trying to torque down something that's cross-threaded. So uh, I'll make sure I go very slow and I'll give that a try. Uh, here is the battery. It is a 3200 milliamp hour battery and so pretty decent. And then the face or the body of the radio. So And it had uh, it has a uh, guide in it, a uh, fairly thick guide, uh, plus a couple looks like uh, some uh, quick start guides, part number, FCC 95 uh, information, and so I'll be going over that as well. Uh, let me uh, uh, oh I did buy this one extra thing, so I bought the smiley stick. This is a, a plus six dB gain. Uh, antenna for the GMRS and so uh, got that as a separate uh, component it's supposed to be a, a 5 8 wave uh, for the radio uh, obviously it's stubby so it's coiled but uh, I am going to put that on and give that a whirl uh, so let me get everything uh, together and turn it on and like I said some of the radio channels were pre-programmed and so all the GMS stuff should already be set up with the repeater frequencies and I think he also entered some tones for the GMRS uh, all calls the, in certain uh, typical tones that are in there. But I'm going to check that out and uh, see exactly all what's in it. 
All right, so uh, stay tuned. Appreciate you watching. This is Ham Solo K0FYR.